So let's go ahead and get started. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jacob Richardson. I am the Director of Transfer Students for ASI this year. And this is our first Rowdy Q&A that we are holding. It's also our first, uh, our first virtual Rowdy Q&A that's ever um, happened. <laughs> and because of the nature of being virtual this year, uh, we decided that we were actually going to hold three of these throughout the semester. So normally there was just one um, that we would have per semester, but because of being virtual, we've decided to do three this year. Um, so if you uh, didn't hear the information for a question that you had, uh, please come back uh, because we will have more panelists in the future. Uh, also, at the end, I will be putting in a link to a Google form uh, for a survey. Uh, I ask that everyone please who uh, joins this uh, as a student, please go take uh, the survey. You will be entered to win um, a gift also that we will be doing giveaways uh, for this event for people participating. Um, if you have a question for one of the panelists, we ask that you either um, type your name in the chat and then we can call on you so that you can unmute yourself and ask the question um, or to just type your question into the chat and we can read it. Uh, and with that being said, I will uh, introduce our first speakers. So from the library, we have Sandra Bozarth and Kristen Gallant. Did I say your last name correctly, Kristen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So they are going to talk about um, library services and what that looks like virtual, and they will answer questions for you guys about the library. Hi everyone, I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen really quick. You should be able to see the library's homepage from here. So my name is Kristen Gallant and I am the Outreach and User Engagement Librarian at CSUB and I handle subjects of art, art history, music, and theater. So if you end up taking any of those classes, um, I might be the librarian that ends up helping you do some research. Uh, we just wanted to point out to you today um, we have a virtual services page, and when you click on the drop down, you'll see uh, a few different menus to choose from. Uh, we have a borrowing materials page that explains all how to borrow books and other materials at CSUV. I do want to state that we are currently out of what is it? We're out of iPads and laptops, I believe that's what we're currently out of. You can still check with IT. If you uh, need to check out a, um, a laptop or a Chromebook or something like that, and I'll show you where you can do that. But if we're in virtual services and we click on that, you'll see a for students box right here. And it, it'll give us, it'll send, give you a link to the for students guide, how to do e-textbooks, uh, how to do citation, how to use uh, OneSearch if you're coming from an institution that hasn't used OneSearch before. And if you have research help, all of our pages right here also do have a chat with the librarian access. So if you click either on this little logo here, this the speak blurb or, one of, or the chat now box, you will be able to chat with the CSUB librarian. And right here, under helpful CSUB resources, you should see a link that says information technology and IT device checkout. And that's where you would go if you need um, assistance in checking out a Chromebook or something like that. So that's just a really quick overview of how to find access to services. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Sandra now and she'll probably wanna talk to you about FAQs and then field some questions from you. Hello, everyone. I'm Sandra Bozarth. I'm the uh, department chair for the library. Uh, the subjects I cover for research assistance are um, ethnic studies, psychology, sociology, and criminal justice. So if you are taking any of those classes in those areas and you need research assistance, you can contact me. Um, I'll screen share as well. Um, we have librarians to um, help with every major, most minors as well. well, well, well. So regardless of what class you're in, you should be able to find a librarian that can help you. Under our research tab, if you go to research help, you'll see the pictures and the contact information for every one of our librarians. Um, we get paid to help you. So um, please reach out to us, email us, um, call us. We can do Zoom or chat with you. Um, we're uh, just as, av as available as we were when we were on campus. So uh, please do reach out to us. Um, uh, to find your librarian uh, by this page, or if you're not sure, if you go
anthropology major, you can click here and it will take you to the resources for anthropology as well as the librarian that's associated with that area, um, how to email or schedule an appointment with that particular librarian. So also if you're not an anthropology major but you're taking a class and you have research questions, you can contact that librarian. Um, so we're here to help all students regardless of what uh, major or minor you're in. If you're in the class, we'll, we'll help you with the research portions of it. Um, also on our pages, you'll find not only databases to find your articles, but if you click on the guides, we have each created um, a guide full of resources and how to get started with help. So I know there's some students who don't like to reach out for help right away. They want to find everything on their own. Um, so we've created these guides here to kind of help um, put you on the right path to finding uh, what resources you may need. Um, so I'm going to click on this picture at the very top that gets me back to the library homepage. Um, um, the FAQs, this is another good spot to go if you have some questions um, and not sure where the, our webpage is full of information. So if you go to FAQs, you can um, look at um, the questions that are listed here. You can type in there and search, or you can go to the far right and look at the subject headings there to find um, the different categories of, of questions you may or may not have. Once you click on one of them, it will give you information, maybe more links to it. And then you can even add, um, comment or ask more questions about that question you were looking at. If it didn't completely answer your question, you could submit your question here and um, it'll go into our chat system where someone will definitely looks at those questions. We have someone looking at those every day, even on the weekends. Um, we turn around time though on the weekend may be a little bit slower. So. And that's the last thing I wanted to point out back on the library homepage is our chat feature Kristen um, showed you earlier. Uh, if, depending on what you're looking at right now, some of us might be on a mobile device, so it might be really small, but on the library's homepage, on the right side, you'll see the big exception should pop up. Um, it's on every, just about every one of our pages in some fashion. It might not be the big box. It might be a little one that's floating at the bottom. But when you click on that, someone helps you live. It might not be someone from CSUB if it's after hours. Um, our hours are here. So if it's uh, Friday um, after five, um, it would, someone would answer you, but it wouldn't be from CSUB. But definitely someone from CSUB is on during these hours here. Um, it's just one person from CSUB at a time, so it's possible we're helping someone else and someone else from another institution may grab you um, so that you're not having to wait a long time for a question. But please use our chat service if you have questions after hours, especially, or you're not sure who to contact. You can also call us. Um, this is the main line uh, that that person who answers can direct you to whoever's answering questions live for the day. If you want to email with someone or if you just want to talk and not do the chat, we can get you connected to someone as well. So I think that's all that I wanted to cover. Do okay, awesome. Um, so if anyone has any questions for Sandra or Kristen, uh, please put your name in the chat or type your question in the chat and we will call on you. Um, I do have a quick question. It's kind of like a procedural procedural question, I guess. So I know that you can borrow materials now from the library. Um, and I know that it's kind of like a drive up service. Can you explain a little bit more about what that, uh, I didn't, yeah. Does it say on the website, like how, how we should go about doing that? It it does. We just put it up. I went to the wrong page already. We just got it here. Um, is it under borrowing, Kristen? Where did it go? We, we added a new link somewhere. I'm not seeing it right away, but um, it is within this page as well. It talks about the iPads. You do have to call for the iPads and laptops, which are out. Mm -hmm. um, those. Uh, when you're actually looking for an item in OneSearch. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick search. When you find an item that you want, um, I'm sorry, criminal justice, I always go to drugs for my, <laughs> my searches, you can always find something. So once you're in here looking at an item, it will tell you how it's available and how you can request it. So these right here on the top, they're all online, so no need to request. But this one here is telling me it's in the library, available in the library. So when I click on it, it will tell me what I can do after I sign in. That's the big kicker is that um, students will be like, you said we could 
order this, but I don't see how um, must sign in so it will tell you if we can digitize it, if you can pick it up, or if we can mail it to you. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, it's best to be in the item, and then it'll tell you exactly what we can do. Um, and I already passed it. So, yeah, just scrolling right underneath request options, I can request for pickup or mail, and I can request to digitize that. And then if you need help for some reason, maybe these items options aren't there. If you click on the 24 seven chat help, someone will come in and try to help you. They won't see your screen right away, but they'll, you know, you can ask for help with, with how to request. But, but does that help answer? I mean, that's the first step in finding your item and then clicking whatever option. And I'll just do this one where like, it's super cheesy. The form you, comes up, talks about copyright and then you hit request. Go ahead, Kristen. I was gonna say also within this form, um, what will happen then is if you request to pick up the book, you will get an email from circulation and you can arrange your appointment time to pick up the book that way. Um, and then also in the virtual services in the borrowing tab, there's a box on the top right hand side and it has a little blurb about picking up um, laptops and iPads, but it also has the phone number to call to make an appointment. So that's right there as well. Okay, awesome. Okay, and you can always ask questions throughout. It doesn't, if, like if you have a question about the library, please feel free to put it in um, the chat at any time. Um, don't feel like it has to be right now. Um, so if something comes up later, please feel free to share your question with us. Um, but if there are no other questions right now, uh, we will move on to our next panelist. Thank you so much, Sandra and Kristen. We really appreciate it. Oh, wait, we have a question. Um, uh, oh, I'm going to mispronounce your name, so I so apologize. Is it Yuriki? It's Yuchechi. And oh, I get, okay. um, okay. no, no, you're good. Um, I know we're going to be online in the spring. Is there a, is there a works, uh, plan in the works for if we're able to study in the library, if it's going to be open come in spring? So currently we're following along with the campus um, of being closed. So we do, we are making plans. We've actually had plans for different stages. Um, I'm just kind of waiting for the permission to, um, you know, once campus is open. But we are working on our extra, we have um, plans for how that will happen if we're allowed to open partially at like a percentage, if we're to open full, if we have one level or two levels. So we do have stuff like that mapped out, um, but we're just not being allowed to do that yet as we're having to follow along with the campus procedures of being closed. So we'll be okay. working on it for you. Okay, thank you so much. No and then I also know that that has been something that we in ASI have talked about as a concern about like students that might need a study space and what does that mean? Um, so I know that's something we've been talking about. So hopefully we will come to something, uh, come up with some kind of an arrangement, even if the library isn't able to um, open for students to study. So um, I've, I've heard that as well, that there's other talks about other locations possibly or options on campus. So okay. Um, but nothing has been finalized, but mm -hmm. been talked about. So we're just, I, I want all students to know that it's, it's, it's a concern for everyone and, and we all want su success for our students and study space, quiet space is important. So we're, we're working on it. Okay, so let's move on to um, our next speaker is um, Jamie Pacheco, and she is with the Veteran Success Center on campus. So I'll let her introduce herself and her job title and then talk a little bit about the Veteran Center and what services they're offering while we're virtual. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Jacob. Um, so I am Jamie Pacheco. I am the Veteran uh, Success Center Coordinator uh, at the Veterans Center, and um, we are very operational. Uh, we are still providing the same services that we did provide uh, in person. We had to tweak them a little bit, but uh, most of our services we are still providing to all of our students. Um, we're fully functional. I uh, take emails, take uh, questions every day through on the phone. Students can call us. Um, we are going to be implementing our virtual walk-in 
uh, times too. So if anybody needs uh, just to have a quick question, they'll be able to have a link that uh, will be set up on our homepage and they can click on that and then can talk to one of our student assistants and get any questions that they have, uh, that they may have and get, you know, the answers that they need. And then two, having a, a student to student contact is so important, I think. So um, we're going to be implementing those virtual walk-in hours, um, hopefully this week. Uh, so that will be available. And I do share all of our information. That's all up and coming on our social media pages. Um, our social media pages are uh, through our Instagram and our Facebook page. And I also have an email listserv that I send out to all of our veteran students. So that too is also available and how we communicate to all of our students. Um, as far as with the virtual um, things that we are doing that are a little bit different is that we're still continuing our workshops that we have offered throughout this semesters. And uh, some of those virtual workshops are now going to be in, in a Zoom. And um, we're going to still reach out to our veteran community. And they're still going to be providing that uh, type of resources to our veterans. Um, the resources, one I can uh, let you share with you guys is that we do have one up and coming. With, it's next Friday. It's September 25th. Uh, we have a flyer for that that has been posted to, to our social media pages. Um, and that is with the Veteran Service Office. And anybody can attend. The Veteran Service Office is going to go over veteran resources to veterans and veteran dependents as well. And so we're going to have a session there uh, where uh, he'll our a representative. He's actually going to be the director of the entire Kern County office. Uh, he's an alumni from CSUB, so it's really great that we have an alumni that's going to be presenting. But this workshop is going to be good. It's going to kick off our fall semester with uh, resources that we will have available to our students. We work very closely with the supportive services in Kern County uh, that are veteran related. So with the Veteran Service Office, they're pretty uh, our main go-to because they do a lot with our VA and two with providing benefits for our veteran dependents as well. So if any students have any questions for a VA representative, we can get you in contact with somebody and that's with the, um, oh, Chase, I'll, I'll, uh, it's September 25th. Uh, sorry, there's a question in here. It's September 25th, uh, 12 o'clock. And I'm gonna put my email in there. If you wanna email me, I will send you the Zoom link and you can sign up for it. Um, and that's how we're keeping track of our RSVPs for it. But my email is in the chat. It's jlopez33 at csub.edu. Um, and it's going to be September 25th at 12 o'clock. And it's from 12 to 1. So that's a Friday. So next Friday. Um, so that's one of the ones that we have coming up. We do have another one coming up too with uh, the Wounded Heroes Fund. Some of you may be familiar with Wounded Heroes. They're a really big foundation here that services Kern County. And what's great about uh, this foundation is that it's only just for Kern County area. And so all of our students um, can take full advantage of the opportunities through our local foundations. And we collaborate with them and bring their services to our campus and make them available to our students. And that's what we're doing right now is we're working very collaboratively with some of these foundations. Uh, due to COVID, it kind of has thrown a, a wrench in, into how things are operating, especially in our veteran community. And so we are all coming together to uh, still ensure that we are providing the services to our veterans and our veteran community in different aspects. Um, so I'm also on a board with our veteran collaborative. Uh, it's a Kern County veteran collaborative. It's made up of over 200 uh, county uh, companies, and agencies, and government offices. Uh, we're a part of that. And so any of those types of government agencies, we also bring to our veteran center as resources. Resources. Um, something just to kind of name a few that we've had in the past. Some of our students have had problems getting uh, GI benefits and um, they may or, or veteran dependents may have problems getting GI benefits. Um, sometimes there's delay and uh, veteran disability benefits. So we work with our agencies and our government offices where we can actually do an, a congressional inquiry. And so we work with um, mostly it's been with Kevin McCarthy's office and they've been great. They've actually done congressional inquiries for our veterans and they have uh, gotten all their VA stuff fixed. So we've reached out to them many, many times, and they've actually helped our students on our campus to ensure that they are getting the resources and the available, um, you know, the available veteran benefits. And in addition to that, we also are um, 
when we partner up with some of these foundations, they do recognize that being a student is really hard right now, especially with some of our veterans, that they're not able to have a, a space to go to. And so some of the foundations have actually opened their doors and they have provided a space for the veteran students to be able to go to that, to those specific places. Uh, they do have, you know, COVID um, health, you know, health uh, department guidelines. So they are following that. They are cleaning the areas. There is a, a max capacity of how many people can be in an area, but some of the foundations have actually opened their doors and it's a provided space for veteran students and veteran dependents and spouses that they can go to these areas where they can study. There's Wi-Fi available for them. There's computers. Um, it's an air conditioning area. And so it's just a nice, safe space for them to go to, to be able to study and to, um, you know, focus on their academics while they are a student. And, and this, uh, the foundations are actually available for all of uh, Kern County area. So we're not the only institution, but they have also opened their doors for any uh, of the local community colleges as well. So um, that's one thing that I'm really thankful that the foundations here in Kern County have really been so supportive of our veteran community and our veteran students, particularly in our area, because they do recognize that some of the difficulties and struggles that our students are facing, they're able to make some accommodations and service them. Um, in addition to that, we also, with the foundations too, they have uh, grants that are available and um, the grants are available through the foundation where you can apply. There are four veterans um, and some of those veterans, they can be qualified for say an extra $500 uh, that can be payable to go towards any of their uh, needs. And it's not so much educational based needs, but it's needs of a veteran. So some of our students may be struggling in different capacities, even with food insecurities. And so some of these foundations are uh, available for our students to take advantage of. Um, most of our students have families and most of them come out of the military and their only source of income is just the GI Bill. And, and so they do struggle a little bit and, and the foundations understand that and they are available there to assist students with any uh, type of assistance. Uh, we also partner too with uh, what we call CVAF, California Veterans Assistant Foundation. They also help with housing. Uh, right now, housing has been a big issue and homelessness or at-risk homelessness. And so we work with this agency as well. So if there is a student that does have a need and, and, and a, um, a housing need, that we can get them connected with one of our agencies. And they have a, a point of contact where they can set up an appointment and work with one of our specialists in the county that can help them with their homelessness or uh, at-risk of homelessness and see what they can do for them and get on a program. So it's really great that we work with uh, these community resources and we bring them to campus to help our students with uh, anything that they need uh, as far as that goes. Um, also, too, we work with all the other inner department uh, on campus as well. So we work with financial aid. We work with academic schools. Um, we also work with student financial services and making sure that students' accounts are up to date, that they reflect their GI Bill on their accounts. Uh, veteran dependents, if you're a veteran dependent, you may be familiar with what we call the CalVet fee waiver. It's tuition assistance as a veteran dependent. So I take those award letters and I work with our admissions office and our student financial services, uh, actually our registrar's office, to make sure that those fees are on the accounts and that their accounts are getting paid. Um, I also work with the school certifying official, which is Katie Snyder. Uh, she does all the handling of the GI Bill. So some of our students, they're right out of uh, the military and they're, um, they're new to the GI Bill. So if you have any questions regarding uh, how the GI Bill works or how your accounts are paid, uh, please let me know. You can email me or you, you, know, you can ask here as well. We can go over it, but it's very in-depth. So I don't want to take all the time, um, but you can give me a call. I take calls all the time too. I'm going to put my number in there in the chat box. Um, and I'm available Monday through Friday. And you can call me anytime with any of your questions. Uh, and let me put that in there. You can call me if you have any questions and I'll talk to you um, regarding any of the benefits that we have available as well. Um, and lastly, we also have um, 
We also have many other, um, we have a club that we work closely with. And so our club is involved in many programs and resources, and we even have an ASI representative too. Uh, so we try to promote for students to get involved on campus. And um, that's something that we do. If you are interested in getting involved on campus, becoming involved in the club, um, please reach out to me. I'll get you in contact with our point of contact in the ASI department. And uh, he's really great. His name is Miles Howard. You can work with him and in getting involved with um, ASI and the club too, if you'd like. Um, and those are some of the resources that we do have going uh, as far as what we're doing for our students. And that is about it. Um, pretty much that's all I got. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Yeah, if there's any questions, please feel free to put your name in the chat or to just type the question into the chat. And then as Jamie said, um, please feel free to reach out to her outside of this event if you have questions about veteran services. Um, thank you, Jamie, so much for sharing that with us. Okay, so our next um, panelist is going to be Olivia Warren, and she is our campus advocate. So hi, Olivia, please uh, feel free to introduce yourself and, and share with us uh, what CSUB is doing for students virtually as far as um, campus advocacy for, for uh, sexual assault and domestic violence. Yes, hi everyone, my name is Olivia Warren. Um, so I'm the campus advocate and education coordinator. Um, I am gonna go ahead and share my screen too. Um, I'm a virtual learner and it's easier for me to picture things virtually. So um, I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so this is just the web page. I'm gonna scroll down and show you how to get to Title IX and then how to get to me. So you can just press Title IX and it'll come up. Then on this side, um, you'll see Campus Advocate. Um, and this is my webpage. Um, so I am a confidential resource for students. So that does mean I am a non-mandated reporter. So anything that is shared to me from students, staff, and faculty stays between um, me and you. I do not have to report it. Um, to Title IX um, or to UPD or anything like that. Um, so I am a support service for um, the CSUB community from um, emotional support. So I provide information and referrals. So that does include that if someone um, has gone through sexual harassment, sexual assault, domestic violence, dating violence, stalking, um, they can come to me. Um, we do know that when someone goes through something like this, it does affect all aspects of their lives. Um, so that means I can help you get referred to counseling. Um, I can also pre-screen and screen you for CalFresh um, and help you fill out that application. Um, you don't have to um, be a survivor of one of these different aspects for me to help you with CalFresh. You can just email me and I can pre-screen you and send you that application. Um, I can also help with education accommodations, um, housing accommodations, helping with um, referrals to, um, if you need to find somewhere to live, get out of your landlord, anything like that. Okay, so um, here's my contact information. So you can call me um, or you can email me, whichever one is easier. You can also press book an appointment um, and it goes straight to me and you can book an appointment based on your schedule and my schedule. You can choose if you wanna do it Zoom or um, over the phone. I still offer all of my services. Um, I just do it through um, Zoom or the phone. It's whichever one is more comfortable um, and easier for you. Um, and then there's a few as your rights, as well as um, like frequently asked questions. If there's ever a question that someone has um, and they need to ask, they can always reach out. They can always email me or call me and I'll be happy to respond. Um, another aspect of my job. So one aspect is um, advocating for students. Um, and then I also do outreach, um, so prevention efforts. So one thing I do is the Title IX training. Um, all the students got this in their inbox that they are required to do that so they don't have a judicial hold. Um, so you can just press the Title IX training and then go to for more information. Um, and then down, you can do the online training 
or you can do um, workshops with me via Zoom. There are two left, um, so on the 25th and the 6th of October. So you can RSVP for these. It's just a form you fill out, put your student ID. You show up um, to the Zoom and you'll get credit. Um, this is also important accommodation. Sometimes these trainings can be triggering for students. So if you do need accommodations, you can just email T9 training at csub.edu or you can email me at advocate at csub.edu um, and I will follow up and we can get those accommodations um, going and then you will receive credits for your um, for what you're wanting to do. I am going to stop sharing my screen, but another aspect of my job is I also do events. So for domestic violence awareness, sexual assault awareness, stalking. So October is domestic violence awareness month. So I will be doing like three or four events um, in collaboration with other um, people on campus. So just stay tuned for that. Um, I do have an Instagram. Um, it's Campus Advocate CSUB, um, and there I will post different um, like flyers for my events, as well as I try to post tips um, and self care. Um, so next month I'll be posting a lot about how to have healthy relationships, um, who to go to for resources um, if you're going through something. How do you support a survivor um, if something is happening? Um, I am available. Um, almost all the time. So if you're ever needing anything, please just email or call. Um, there's also a 24 hour hotline that the Alliance Against Family Violence has. So you can always look them up and you can, it's also on the website too. And their numbers that you can call them and they always know how to get in contact with me. And if you're wanting to prefer to talk to me, they'll reach out to me and I will um, reach out to you. So if you ever, just like I said, if you ever have any questions, comments, concerns, you need clarification on anything, um, just like feel free to reach out and I will always answer. Um, so thank you all. Awesome, thank you so much. I was wondering um, what was gonna happen with DVAM because I know that that's always kind of a big thing on campus. DVAM and ZAM are, are big events uh, for us. So I'll be interested to see what the virtual events are and I'm looking forward to those definitely. Um, yeah, thank you. Oh, uh, do you mind putting your IG and the Instagram in the chat for Chase and for all the other students so that they can see it? Yes, I will do that right now. Perfect, thank you. Um, if there's any questions for Olivia, please feel free to um, put your name in the chat or even ask a question in the chat and we will ask it to her at any time. Um, if there aren't any questions, we will move on. Thank you, Olivia, again. Um, to Natasha Harris, who is the um, with the Transfer Student Center. Um, and I know a lot of people know her from orientation. Uh, so I'm excited to hear her speak and share about what uh, the Transfer Student Center is offering uh, for students this semester. Well, thank you, Jacob. Um, like you said, my name is Natasha Harris. I am your I am your Transfer Student Success Coordinator, um, and I'm happy to be joined on the call. Amani is on here with me also. She is one of your transfer coordinators, one of those helping you responsible, her and Melissa, to get you guys all here to the university. So we are excited that you are now roadrunners. You're out of that red and black or black and gold or whatever color you were in before. We're all a part of the blue and gold family now. Um, so the Transfer um, Resource Center, we are your resource. We are here to assist you if you ever need any resources, um, ideals on where to go, suggestions, or anything help like that. You can always reach out to the Transfer Center for that. Um, you can find us contacting us still, transfer at csub.edu. We're still there um, to assist you if it's, you know, helping out with advising or figuring out how to get to an advisor, how to drop classes, researching, are you taking the right? We're going to refer you to your academic advisor, but you can always reach out to us to start with that help. Um, for your Transfer Resource Center, we do have our surprise. We thought we were having our grand opening in the spring, but I guess we're going to wait a little bit longer. Um, we have our Resource Center that is coming when we return to campus, so we're excited about that. Um, but some of the things we'll be doing in the meantime, um, we have workshops and stuff going on. We did our Finish and Four workshop on Friday to welcome our Transfer um, Finish and Four students from Bakersfield College, Porterville, and Taft College. 
Um, if you missed that, Amani is reaching out back to you with more information on the services for those that are finishing four and the benefits to those programs, which we know is that priority registration, which will kick in this spring semester. So we're excited for that. Um, we have more workshops coming up as, um, not sure if you guys know, but the week of October 18th through the 24th, that is National Transfer Student Week. So we will be celebrating that virtually. Last year, you know, we did our hot chocolate and cocoa and we had all kinds of workshops and stuff for the week. Um, so we're still doing that. It won't be hot chocolate and cocoa this year, but we're gonna plan some other fun and cool things. We'll have some transfer chats and talks and stuff like that. Um, of course, some giveaways, we love giveaways. Um, if you do not follow us, I encourage you to get on and follow us, CSUB Transfer on Instagram and Facebook, like everybody else. We actually have a giveaway going right now on there. If you get on, you can comment about some of the things, what's getting you through right now. Um, what is the question? What words are you living by right now to get through this semester? We know that it's been a challenge for some of you guys, but we want to know we're here for you. So if you haven't, get on, make a comment. Tell us what you're living by. Let's help encourage each other as transfer students to get through this semester. We have a few more weeks to go, a lot more weeks to go, but we got a few more weeks to go. So let's provide some words of encouragement. Um, so check the Transfer Center page. Amani's always posting some um, tips and stuff on there, any of the workshops we have for our incoming as well as our current transfer students. Um, but like I said, transfer week, we're so looking forward to that. Um, and our giveaways we have, if you guys have not already heard, there's an advising workshop coming up Thursday. Like I said, we're your resource, so I'm going to plug everything I can plug for you guys. Um, transfers, we know you guys were given roadmaps when you guys came in. We want to encourage you to continue to follow those roadmaps. But if for some reason you have questions, there is a advising workshop. It's scheduled for Thursday from 11 a.m. to 1. We I'm telling you guys, this is a wonderful. It is all four academic schools along with the ABC campus. There will be advisors on from all four schools and the AV on to give you tips and help you um, about academic probation. They're going to be talking about how to add and drop classes, how to schedule your appointments. We start um, advising in a few weeks for the spring semester already. So you definitely want to get on for that. But more than anything, like I said, the Transfer Center, we are here. We are your resource to the campus and your campus connection to make sure that you know that this is your university and you do belong here at CSUB. So once again, welcome on behalf of the Transfer Student Success Center and the admissions team. We are glad that you've decided to join us. And if you need anything, email us, transfer at csub.edu or find us on social media and drop us a line. I have a nice backpack and some giveaways that we got that we want to give away. So um, please get on and see us. Let me see, Amani's sending me a message. I'm making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, but that is the main thing that we're here for, is your resource. So connect with us on either one of those. Amani, am I forgetting anything? Well, um, Chase had a question. He asked, is info on this workshop on the IG and Facebook page? It will be up on the um, workshop. It'll be up in about another, about 15, 20 minutes. So as soon as we can get off this call, that information will be going up on the um, website. On the Yeah, so give us a minute. Cool. Okay, are there any other questions or comments for Natasha? I'm glad to see you, Chechi and Carlos. I see you, Carlos. Okay, well, if there's no other questions and there's nothing else going on, then we can go ahead and end early. Um, although I will uh, put right now a link to a Google form. Let me put that in the chat right now. Okay, so um, people that uh, came to this event, please, please, please uh, click on the Google form, uh, fill out the information there, give us some feedback about this event. Um, let us know who you'd like to see in the future at Rowdy Q&As. Um, you know, one of our goals is definitely to get financial aid um, and IT to come in because I know that a lot of people will probably have questions about um, those two departments, uh, for those two departments. So um, please let us know who else you'd like to see come and speak and share about what they're offering virtually uh, while we are virtual learning this year. Um, and this is also how you are entered into a chance to win a gift. So please definitely click on that and fill that out because the more feedback we get, uh, the better these events are. Uh, if there's no other questions though, um, I guess, 
that's it. But thank you everyone for coming. Thank you to all the panelists for participating. I really appreciate you guys all taking the time to um, join us and answer questions and share. Um, oh, okay. Where can I find the recording of the meeting? Oh, that's uh, Vanessa. Where will that uh, recording be? We will up, uh, upload it onto the ASI page. Okay. And we will post it on Instagram once it's live. Awesome. Jacob, this is Nadia. I don't know if you can Hi. hear me. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. You did a phenomenal job. I'm so proud of you. And I just want oh, to thank, thank you. you. All the speakers for joining us. You guys killed it. Thank you guys. Thank you, Nadia. I appreciate that. I was really nervous, to be honest, but it, it worked out. So thank you. Okay. Um, if there's no other questions, though, I will end the meeting. Uh, thank you, everyone, again. I really appreciate everyone participating, and I look forward to everyone's feedback. Thank you, and stay safe.